Um, joining me in studio is a good friend of mine, Dr. Margaret Ames. She also hosts a program on uh, this channel every Saturday at 10 a.m., Your Dental Health. Uh, Dr. Ames, welcome aboard. How are you? I'm great, John. I listen to your show. You did? I, I do. I absolutely. No, I do. All right. I do. I, I enjoy it. You know, folks, and I don't, I'm not making this up. This is absolute truth. I'm not going to lie to you, as, you know, with something silly. Dr. Ames has, has recently been treating me, and I literally fell asleep in her chair when I was getting cav- – what, what are you doing to my teeth again? You're taking the old fillings out. Old fillings out. And you're what, – explain uh, to the audience what exactly you're doing. I'm rebuilding And why you're tooth. doing it. You're rebuilding I'm my rebuilding teeth. rebuilding it. Okay, go ahead. So instead of just filling a pothole and plugging up stuff in there, yeah. I'm rebuilding it. It takes time. So I – Make sure that there's nothing in there that's going to continue to break down the collagen that was going on before I took the filling out. And I build it in a structural way to preserve all your tooth structure. Now, this stuff is likely to be 27 years out. I mean, can you imagine 27 years? I'm going to be dead by the time. (laughs) I mean, I'm going to have a good set of teeth when, you know. Uh, well, you have to have your steaks, so I yes, want to make sure you right. have your steaks that, and no pain in between. And that's that's one of our goals. Now, uh, go go to the point that you made uh, as far as the old filling style, the metal that's in your teeth. Why is that not good? Well, it expands uh-huh. and it leaks. It expands over time. I mean, it's actually so many times I want to have a camera with you when I see that, like the mushrooms up out of the tooth. You know, there's different alloys besides silver and mercury. So it, and it expands and contracts at a different rate than the tooth. So the germs percolate in when you're having hot and cold stuff. So the germs get underneath. The only thing that saves it from the silver fillings failing like every year is that it tarnishes and corrodes. So we may not like those electrolytes in our mouth, but it probably does keep the bacteria slowed down a little bit. Is that right? That's right. Wow. Yeah. Now, all right. So now your process is you're, you're literally drilling the metal out of my tooth. Yep. First, you determine whether or not the tooth is still, is, there's still enough good tooth there, right? Right. Or, yeah, right. I forgot the process. Yeah. Uh, and then you drill it out, and you have some special machine there that, that determines that you got all the bad out and only the good is there. Yeah. Is that right? I cannot practice without that. Yeah. It's a laser. It's called a diagnodent. And I, after I think I got it all out, if I'm questionable, I'll put that over the tooth. Oh, and there are certain readings that I get that I know are accurate for different levels of the tooth. Right. This is really precise stuff. And that's why it works, because you get all the decay out, but nothing more than the decay. Right. Because you want to keep the healthy tooth in there. I want to keep it healthy. Right. Now, once that's all out, what do you then replace it with? What, what do you put in in, in in place of the metal? Well, um, I use a composite resin. Uh-huh. But there's different layers and different types. So the first layer has some stuff in it, MDPB. I was trying to review the name of it, but it was developed in Japan, and it actually inactivates the stuff that's there in any area of your body that has inflammation. It's stuff that breaks down protein. So the MDBP is in the product of the first layer. And I let that set for five minutes, so that really sticks tight to your tooth. Then I put the next layer in, and I'm glad you're asleep. You know, yeah. we put that. I'm literally asleep, folks. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not making this up. I think you and, even snored once. And, and you don't even, you, it's not like I get sleeping gas or anything. It's just no. a little Novocaine, which yeah. is a common. Yes. And then, bam, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, um, that drop cloth, yeah. that, you know, that tooth raincoat, right. you, you don't have any of the water going in your right. mouth. So you have, only have your own saliva. You can swallow normally, right. give you a tooth pillow. I mean, I like to set it up so the patient's Right, that's the really whole relaxed. other thing, the tooth pillow, which, you know, I'm surprised. Here I am, 52 years old. I've had my fair share of dentists. Not once to this day, and before I met you and, and you did some work on my teeth, did I ever hear of a tooth pillow. And essentially, that's, a, that's like a piece of rubber yeah. That goes between your teeth, so it keeps your 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 jaw open while you're doing the work. Yeah. Normally, I'm I am myself keeping my jaw open, which at times it gets you know you get like a muscle ache. Yes. You know? So yeah. you can have you can have like a cramp. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I don't want you to accidentally close down because your muscles cramping. Yeah, that wouldn't close be good. down on my drill. That yeah, would be terrible. Yeah, that would be terrible. You know what? These things are often used in children's dentistry. But you know what? We're all kids. When yeah. it comes to being at the dentist, yeah. everybody's a child. Yeah. You know, some people are afraid to say that they're right, afraid. Right. But I treat everybody like 
No, I no take ever care since of them. ever it... since I watched the Marathon Man, I just it's a very <laughs> uncomfortable scene for me. Uh, you know, one interest, one reason why I'm having you on the program, other than the fact that I enjoy speaking with you, and I, I love talking to people who not only are in the tops of their field, not only study uh, their profession, but actually live it and love it. I mean, you and I've had you on before as a female CEO of your own company. And you talked about your whole, you know, how you got into dentistry, you know, how you decided mm. to study it. You decided to go to dental school. You, you pretty much did it on your own. Your fa- fortunately, your father, uh, you know, was a supporter of yours to do, you know, to, uh, supporter, yeah. supported you in making your own decisions and so forth, which yes. is all good. And you weren't necessarily considered bossy by your, by your peers, were you? No. Oh, here, you know. No, even now. I'm, yeah, my yeah, staff not, is there. I consider them like my equals. Yeah. Because I respect them. Yeah. They make good decisions. And we're yeah. all there for you. You're our boss. Right. Right. All right. So anyway, uh, just recently, and I saw this in the New York Daily News uh, about a, a few days ago, and the headline was 26,000 British kids admitted to hospital because of rotten teeth, according to the report. It says here, the British have long been the butt of jokes about their teeth. And a new study has shown that 26,000 youngsters aged between five and nine years old, have been admitted to hospital in England because of tooth decay. Uh, Dentists are extracting teeth among youngsters at the rate of 500 a week in the past year. Uh, It says some children have had all of their baby teeth taken out, uh, according to a report in the Sunday Times. Experts are blaming sugary drinks and fruit juice. Of course, New York and, and, and America is not you know, uh, prone to drinks of uh, sugary drinks and fruit juice. I mean, I had my fair share of Coke. I don't even drink Coke anymore, uh, Diet Coke. I I just don't. Uh, But it says here, according to Graham Barnby, honorary vice president of the British Dental Health Foundation, quote, it all relates to the consumption of sugary, fizzy drinks. Parents are also being blamed for giving their children the wrong diet. Let me ask you this, as far as this story is concerned. Is it, you know, it's, it's addressing youngsters between the ages of five and nine isn't that a little bit early before you know their sugary drinks and how much sugar is in the drinks and what type of sodas that they drink impacts their the health of their their uh their jaw or their their teeth well the first adult tooth comes in at six and the parents don't know that it's an adult tooth because nothing falls out the jaw gets bigger that fits in so that's six years old. So five, you know what happens a lot? Baby bottle carries, they call it. Yeah. So kids go to bed with milk, which has lactose, milk sugar, or apple juice. And they suck on that all night long. So when you have a sugar exposure, the pH in your mouth changes to be favorable for the bacteria to grow and produce the acid that causes the problems while it's in your mouth and for 15 minutes afterwards. Wow. So you want to limit the sugar exposure. So if, you're just, if you have a can of Coke on your take on your table all day, on your desk, and you take a sip every 15 minutes, you have constant, great, uh, favorable conditions for the bacteria to have a field day. In your teeth. Yeah. Is this the same with ice cream or anything with sugar, high high levels of sugar? Um, How about coffee? Like something like coffee. You know, a lot of people, a lot of kids today, teenagers, they're drinking coffee of all things. I mean, I didn't didn't have my first... (laughs) drink a coffee until I was out of college. Yeah. I think I was in law school when I actually needed to stay up and I figured out oh, I'll just have some coffee. Yeah. But now kids are drinking coffee a lot. Is that a... The sugary, creamy, sticky stuff. The stickier it is, the more it's going to stay stuck to your tooth. Yeah. And, and that's, that's bad. what does the damage. Yeah. yeah. Now, how about hereditary issues? I mean, uh, for example, Irish are always known. Are you Irish? I don't even I'm know. an Irish citizen, actually. Yeah. Are you really? In addition to is that the, because of your family or your husband's family? My mother. Your mom. Yeah. Now, is it true? Is it? Is it? Uh, is that? F- uh, I, I've been told that, uh, and I don't know. Is this? Is this uh, not uh, true that that Irish are known to have bad teeth? Yeah. It's, and why is that? Is it bad nutrition? Bad nourishment? Uh, is it hereditary? There is a hereditary component to yeah. it. Yeah. Is it liquor? I mean, I hate to say it, but you know how they, they always associate like St. Patty's Day with, you know, drinking. You know, what is it? Well, why, why do the Irish and here now you have the British, why are they the butt of jokes about their teeth, bad teeth? Well, it's funny, but people tell me the British on the news, they could be missing a front tooth and they don't mind it. 
Oh, is that right? Yeah. You mean the anchor person? Yeah. Would smile and they, they have yeah. one tooth missing. Yeah. And that's like normal for them. So they don't have the same IQ about dentistry as we do. Mm. And they did a study in the Mayo Clinic that dental health is definitely related to longevity and quality of life. Huh. So that's pretty, I mean, we, we're not obsessed with it in our country. We want to have white teeth. We want to have healthy teeth. We want to have health. The British don't seem to be so concerned. But as my mother grew up, they didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, I don't, they probably couldn't even afford toothbrushes. Right. They had a lot of kids. Right. So I think it's part of it was just survival and getting the kids through this. But nowadays, I see kids coming in with baby bottle carries. It's unnecessary. Baby, baby bottle, bottle carries. That's your, the teeth look like a shotgun went between each tooth. There's like a hole between every teeth. Every two teeth in the front. Because they're so you because they were growing up, the, the teeth the, the jaw, the teeth were developing as they had this thing stuck in their mouth. Right. Is that the yep. is that the concept? Yeah, and teeth mature. So the yeah. enamel gets harder over time. So the most cavity prone years are younger. So these kids are there. And and then you have another aspect of it, which I guess I should bring this up. Sure. That's the um, national health care. Oh yeah. So in England, national health care, you can't get into a dentist. And they have to downgrade whatever you want to the cheapest thing. So if you bring that to a logical conclusion, the cheapest thing you can have is dentures. Have all your teeth taken out and have dentures. So these kids, they're probably, you know, some of them, a lot of them could be going to the dentist. But do they have to take the time, does the dentist or the hygienist take the time to educate the patient? Right. To have like a hygienist clean your teeth. For example, you go to a, a, a dentist. And folks, if you're just joining us, I'm here with Dr. Margaret Ames, uh, a close personal friend of mine, but also she hosts a program on Saturdays at 10 a.m. right here on 103.9, Your Dental Health. Uh, Dr. Ames, as far as uh, the normal, uh, I don't know, I was, ever since I was a child, my parents, you know, you brush your teeth before you go to bed, you brush your teeth when you wake up. It was a common thing. It's, it's like you're, it's like growing up, that's what you did. Yeah. Uh, you're, in some cultures, it's just not, whether it has to do with, uh, 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 I don't know, social stature or what have you. But also, healthcare, as it pertains to healthcare. Yeah. Now, in a universal healthcare situation where the government decides what type of care you have, uh, they may decide, they'll generally go, they're going to go the cheapest rate. Or the cheapest way, yeah. one would argue. And one of my physicians here is uh, from South Africa, and he has told me that his brother is a dentist in England, and he's, like, so depressed. And my doctor here in the States is successful. He's a great guy. And he, he told me how sorry he feels for his brother. Yeah. He's, That's not satisfying. No. He didn't become a dentist to have to do what the government says and know you're not doing the best thing for right. your patients. Right, right. That's another thing I love about going to you is you really are excited about doing the job and getting it done right. It's almost you could I don't know whether or not the, the right words is you convinced me, but I trust you. You, t you gave me the concept the last time you were on the program, the concept of the procedures that you do and the type of practice that you have which is uh, the least amount of, how, what's your motto? The least amount of... Uh, minimally invasive. Right, minimally invasive technology. And then uh, I say, okay, I'll give it a shot. I go in there, and you're, you're like a kid in a candy. You're, you're so excited about having a patient in there and saying, hey, listen, trust me, I'm doing this. I'm doing it the right way. It might be a little bit more expensive in the short run, but not in the long run. Oh. It's, a, it's so much cheaper and so much less pain. As far, yeah. you know, I so. mean, I'm going to miss you when we have your work completed and you're only seeing Cindy, our hygienist, <laughs> or Joni. I mean, we'll yeah. say hello, I'll yeah. examine you, but yeah. we'll be done for years. Now, how about the good teeth that d don't have anything uh, going on? Like there's no cavity at all. Thank God. Yeah, but mean, what, will, they, will it eventually get a cavity or no? You can, and you, you, you can get cavities. Yeah. But the way I do it, the biomimetic way, yeah. is I do it so that if you earthquake your tooth, yeah. it's going to fail safely. So it's not going to be the catastrophic failure of a root canal right. or a big crown that's made out of porcelain and metal and it's rigid. Yeah. So that's the way this whole system is constructed. Right. Now, you know, getting back to the universal health care, this is oh. probably something that they're not go they wouldn't promote. Even though it, it, you know, I always think of it's kind of like crime, uh, you know, preventive measures. You know, let's let's do stuff before it be blossoms into a bit major problem, such as health. You know, let's oh, do yeah. things. Let's preventive, you know, heart attack, preventive stroke, preventive diseases. 
But uh, yeah, I, I think we live kind of in a culture of being generally lazy. Uh, and, you know, we, we kind of um, perhaps some of us kind of rest on, you know, our heels saying, ah, you know, if, if I have a problem, I'll go to the dentist yeah. instead of treating themselves beforehand and not having to go to the dentist other than going to see your hygiene, hygienist to to clean your teeth. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you do you recommend uh, having your teeth cleaned by a professional? Well, it depends upon your status as uh-huh. far as your gum health. So we uh-huh. measure the spaces underneath every the gum of every single tooth. Right. So um, I remember you, when you were going through my teeth, you were rattling off numbers. Yes. And there was your the assistant there that was writing stuff down. Is yeah. that, in essence, that's what you were doing? We do that for every patient. Yeah. And we do every that once a year. Every single tooth. Yeah. Every single tooth. Yeah. We check to see if it's loose. So, and if you're not, if it's a bad situation, we're going to take care of it, but also teach you what to do at home. So right. you can reach that hard to reach spot. Right. And Flossing. then you're, it's going to be a continuum, like a cycle of goodness getting better. Right. Flossing. Some people, they just, one patient wants to get a bumper sticker that says flossing is an inhuman act, but I think he's even starting to get it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, it just, I, it's just something I know it takes a little bit more time, more yeah. effort. My wife is obsessed with flossing her teeth. She constantly is flossing her teeth. Myself, well. <laughs> I'm a I'm a I'm a water picker. Yeah, I I I fill up my uh, little water picker full uh, full of maybe I'd say ninety percent water, uh, lukewarm water, and then the rest is uh, Listerine. Now you have to be careful not to have it on high, because if you have inflammation and you're banging the water yeah. into your gums, yeah, because inflammation is an opening. There's a little ulcer under your gums from those bacterial acids. Okay, so. When I go underneath the gum and measure, if it bleeds, I'm touching a capillary. Okay. So you don't want to shove the germs into Inside. that capillary to go yeah. throughout your body. So you basically want to shoot it. I, I generally, the way I envision it, I don't know if I'm doing it right, is I, I'm envisioning shooting the, the water stream through the spaces of my teeth. Okay. I don't point it. I don't point it down towards my gum. I point it up. Okay. That's that's what I so that's, that's what good. you would and recommend. keep it on right? low. Don't put it on high. Really, that was my message. Don't okay. put it on really high. I like it on high. <laughs> <laughs> really okay. So well, that's uh, that's another lesson. You just yeah. joined me recently yeah. uh, in my practice. So right. we're going to tweak your uh, technique. Okay. We're going to show right. you why All right. behavior modification is about knowing why. How much, uh, Doctor Ames and folks? If you're just joining us, uh, Doctor Ames is the host of Your Dental Health. Uh, heard every Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on 103.9. Uh, Dr. Ames, how hard is it or how realistic is it if you have a patient in there with, I I guess, bad genetics as far as, uh, is that true? Like some people, you could just, a family tree, like if you have a parent, bad teeth, daughter, bad teeth, son, one, two, three, bad teeth. Is is that normal or is that not? We have more preventive measures that we can use. Yeah. So I wouldn't give everybody a briefcase full of toys to do this, do this. But some people have serious problems so they come in we have a few patients that come in once every two months for a cleaning now most adults need every three months okay some don't kind of like your oil change uh every thousand miles or every three thousand miles yeah and it's it's good because you can see the progress that's why we take the pictures in the beginning right because when we take that's another thing that's another thing i loved about you you know she you took pictures of my entire mouth in in like three dimensions and you show them to me you say yeah. this is this is the situation. This is this is a very good area. You have very strong teeth here. Look at this. This is a problem, and yeah. you explain why. Yeah. Isn't it great when you give a patient, you know, conceptually? It, it, usually, a dentist just goes in there, does his thing. It's almost like your computer. You know, when you have when you're having a problem with your computer, somebody comes and helps you. Yeah, fixes it. Doesn't tell you why. It's what so was wrong? Frustrating. It is frustrating. <laughs> but now, so that when I come visit you, I truly have a concept of what you're going to do. When I when I'm there, that's probably why I just go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the trust. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's it's really exciting because then you can say I've had patients say they need to come in for an emergency exam because they thought they found oral cancer. Yeah. I mean, we Whoa. get the looking at their own mouth, like doing yeah. oral yeah. self examinations. Yeah. What with little mirrors and stuff, or what? Well, or some just, have yeah. we have little disposable mirrors. Those yeah. that want it, yeah. they take it home. I say, look in front of a makeup mirror, yeah. and you can see. I mean, yeah. people get as excited about this as I do. Yeah. Well, you should. <laughs> I mean, you know, instead of just you know, again, we live in this culture of just quick fixes. Oh, just yeah. enamel everything, or just well, porcelain everything. Take out the teeth porcelain in i want a beautiful you know smile well it doesn't prevent future cavities no it doesn't it doesn't no. no it just moves the area where you can get the cavity
gravity is down below the gum line where it's harder to brush and harder for me to see and harder for me to, re- to restore. Yeah. So oh. it, it's, caps aren't the answer. Yeah. They look pretty. Yeah. They look nice, and sometimes that's the person's number one goal. <laughs> well, very good. Dr. Ames, I want to thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. It's a nice little topic uh, for the afternoon. This, uh, you know, set everybody straight. And if they want to contact you, you have a website, Dr. Ames, A-M-E-S, Dr. Ames, D-R-A-M-E-S dot com. Check it out. And also you can listen to her every Saturday at 10 a.m., Your Dental Health. Doctor, it was good seeing you. I can't wait to see you again. Always good to see you, John. All right, folks. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you next time.